Hi, in this video, I'm going to be going over just a little bit of the basics on reading a trust detailed page. So these pages are the papers that you're going to get with your trust packet that are going to give you all of the information that you as the builder need to know about specific trusses and you know as far as their bearing points their overall lengths where their bracing needs to be certain section lengths um, uplift ratings you know nailing patterns for girders it, these papers will have everything that you need to know in regards to specific information on trusses in this picture you can see that each truss has a specific name and a type a quantity and apply so these are going to be the informations that you're going to need especially on girders is where your quantity and ply are going to come into play but say you have 20 trusses that are all identical then in the quantity box there's going to be 20 and then in the case of this particular girder there's only a single girder but it's three ply so what that means is that this girder has three identical trusses that are going to get fastened together here you can see where it is annotated that the top plate is going to set. So this is shown as two boxes with an X through it. And that's showing that that's a cut through of that particular plate region. So you can see there that that's the double plate that it's sitting on. And this particular truss doesn't extend. And that's really what this little area is showing you. And here, just like the plates, you have a cut through of a two by four that is actually going to in this instance be used as a brace pattern for a piggyback to set on top of so these are shown the exact same way that plates are it's a box with a little x cut through it and that's just showing that it's going to be a two by four setting there and then also that's going to tell you pretty much where you're looking at for how many bracings that you're going to need and this is going to help you with your material pull off as well because it lets you count how many you're going to need and then you can look at your plans and calculate the total linear foot you need. One of the most important things when, as a foreman, I'm looking at these trust detail pages is going to be in your reactions for the max uplift. Now, our particular area, if it has 200 pounds of uplift or more, it needs to get a hurricane tie. So this area is going to show you basically which points of contact or bearing points are going to need a hurricane tie or some other specific type of fastening just to be able to deal with the wind uplift rating that that the engineers have given for this truss so in this case you can see that point eight actually has 2309 pounds of uplift and point 14 actually has 2604 pounds of uplift now with this being a girder i always put hurricane ties on girders regardless but this is telling you that this is clearly over 200 pounds of uplift. So both sides of this girder are going to need supplemental fastening. Here you can see the point eight that I was referencing. On these detail pages, pretty much wherever the truss is, is touching or wherever your point of interest is, it's going to have a number that corresponds very closely to that location. So you can see in this case where this girder is going to be sitting on these two top plates, that's considered point eight. So in the photo before, you could see that the uplift rating for point eight was 2,309 pounds. So that means for this point, you do need that additional uplift factor. And that's really how you correspond the points that are listed in the reactions with the actual picture of the truss. Here you can see in the notes what your nailing pattern is going to be. And this is particularly specific for girders in most instances. But you can see here where it says three ply truss to be connected together with nails as follows. Top cords, which are two by four in this case, one row at nine inches on center. So basically what that means is every nine inches you need to have a single nail. On your bottom cord, it shows two by six, three rows staggered at four inches on center. So what that means is you need to have a staggered four inch on center line. So the best way that I've found to do that is to pull four inches and install a single line of nails on one side or the other of your bottom cord and then stagger halfway for the middle and then for the bottom row that would give you your third row 
you're just going to match the first line of nails that you installed. So it's going to give you a staggered pattern. And then you can see here for the webs, the webs are really any cord that are not on the outside of the truss. And in this instance, it's a two by four, same as the top cord, one row of nails at nine inches on center. These two boxes here along the bottom cord are annotating that you're going to get a hanger of some form there. So whenever you're seeing specifically on a girder, you're going to see little boxes that are shaped like this here, as you can see at the end of the pencil. And what those are telling you is that those are all of your placement locations for your connecting trusses that are going to be setting into the girder. And it's essentially just telling you that the two little boxes are going to be the two wings on your hanger. So on either side of your hanger, you have your nailing wings. And that's really what that's showing right there. Here at the end of the pencil, you can see the measurements that are given for truss lengths. So one thing that is helpful to know with these is across this line, there's two sets of numbers. So the top set is the cumulative measurement from left to right. So each section that you increase, you're adding the sections behind it. So once you get all the way to the right, that's the entire length of the truss. The measurements that are on the bottom, however, are just for that particular section. And this is particularly useful if you're trying to figure out what your overhang is. So these trusses will give you your measurement for the section that shows, you know, past a beam or past perhaps a load bearing wall out to your fascia. So it's a good thing to know what these two sets of measurements are for. Here you can see a picture of an example of a girder that my team and I set on a job here recently. This is a two-ply girder. There's going to be hangers setting on the interior side of this. But you can see that we're just getting it set up and ready so that when truss day does come and we install all of the other trusses, we already have this one set. We know exactly where it's going to go, and we know that it's level. And this really just helps facilitate a smoother crane day with installing all of your trusses because anything that you can get done before you're actually setting trusses is going to be really beneficial as far as setting mainly girders or possibly gable ends that you can get to easily. It just really helps speed up the entire process of setting the rest of them. Hopefully this was helpful for everyone learning a little bit about trust detail papers. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that you want me to get into a little bit more detail in or if there's anything that I didn't cover that you have questions about. Thanks.